right, what's up everybody? Day 188, 9, 189. Oh, I think I forgot to change the title once again. Let me change the title really quick. Tweet. Yeah, so today I'm gonna to be making the fire sword. Yesterday was the ice sword. All right, so let me show you how the ice sword turned out. Anybody that's watching here on YouTube, you get a feel for what was done yesterday. I'm working on these swords where you got a. Whoops, sorry, that's probably super loud. Um, yeah, so you get an icy ghost sword. That's what I have right now. Oops, that's not it. So it freezes enemies. I love how the graphics turned out for this one. So they get all frozen. Oh, I like how that one turned out. So the ghost sword doesn't actually damage foes when you when you hit him. It just damages. It just like freezes them for a minute. So it's kind of like a stun in a sense. So, anyways, what's up, Lith? What time is it here? Two thirty. That's right. Getting started early today. So yes, it's time to switch over to the fire sword. So the fire sword, the gold fire of the fire sword is to be able to light things on fire. And this is gonna work for secrets and quests and uh, damaging enemies and things like that. So my goal today is to get this fire sword to turn these two pillars on fire. So I just drew some pillars that don't have any fire on them. And that's the goal, get them to light on fire. Yo, what's up Sergeant Serg? What's up, you guys? How are your, how's it going? So, I already got this started where we've got a creation method for pillars. Nice, right on. Yeah, you deserve a badge. I made it early to the stream today. Or maybe a gold star. You get a couple gold stars. You earned it. So let's. Um, I'm thinking what's the how it's gonna work is in here. It'll create this pillar. It's unlit. Um, and an unlit pillar will have. I'm thinking a health component. So they'll have like one hit point. And as the fire, the 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 fiery ghost sword flies by that pillar collides with that pillar's entity, it will, um, it will, you know, it'll, it'll recognize that this pillar has a weakness to fire or can be lit on fire. And then the fire entity will just be created. So I think that's about how it'll work. So it's really, it's got all got a, it all comes down to adding a health component. So I was trying to rack my brains earlier, like how could I do this better? But I think this will this will work, you know. I guess it doesn't really matter how, if it's if it's done extremely well as long as it works, and to the player, it won't really matter anyway. So okay, so we'll give him a health component with like one hit point. <laughs> Boo gold stars, I want Meor Tide stars? You mean meteorite? Meor Tide, what's a Meor Tide, man? That's gotta be a made up word. I like it. You can get one of those. What's up, Ladder Thief? Hello. Yeah, early stream. Meteorite, I thought so. All right. <laughs> you had me all confused there for a second. I'm like, Meteor Tide? What the heck is a Meteor Tide? Let's 
getting hot already. Start talking, I get hot. What's up, Xbox Taco? So, yeah, I'm creating a fire right now. A fire, the fiery ghost sword thing. So, what I'm thinking is I'm making an unlit pillar with a health component with one hit point that is weak to fire. So, as soon as it gets hit, it, it deletes its health component and creates some fire. It's the bastard brother of meteorite. Cool, so they can have like a... Like they have some like cosmic battle up in the up in the heavens, meteorites and meteor tides. HP max HP invincible duration invincible blinks. Okay, so we got HP one max HP one invincible duration zero invincible blinks zero. I think that ought to do it. When I'm done with this game, I continue screaming. Yes, yeah. I'm thinking this is kind of a lifetime type of thing. I love it. I love chilling with you guys. We get to connect. I can't really I can't really relate with that many people. You know what I mean? In my day-to-day -day life, not very many people understand game development or or all the geekery that I'm into. So it's super cool to live stream. Thanks, Lighter Thief. Yeah. I added some sound effects for it today, so they get that they have this like icy crackly noise. <laughs> which one's good which one's bad then entities entities okay so we need collision flags um k collision Fire. No, 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 no. Hmm. Okay, I'm wondering about this because every entity by default, I guess we need to set this to be fire weak. Yeah, and that way, this kind of this kind of shows that this entity is weak to fire. You know what? I'm probably gonna need to create a special entity for this. Actually, I already know I am. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do it this way. So let's do that. Let's create a new entity. Entities uh, push back. Entity create. Because it's going to have a different collision than the than the rest. So let me show you what I mean. Turn on draw debug and we'll see the collision area for the actual. The collision area for the pillar is going to be different than the collision area for the what gets lit on fire. Because we want it to see. So the walking, when you walk around this thing, um yeah that that's good but when you actually light it on fire i want the whole pillar to be able to be lit on fire it doesn't matter where you hit it actually it, it will matter i want it to be lit on fire on top only okay so that's yeah i'm gonna keep that debug on for a second while i create this entity i need a position component P dot X, P dot Y plus, let's see, let's put it um, about, that's about 21 pixels high. So yeah, we'll do, we'll do 20 pixels here. <laughs> oh, oh, the meter tide is a good one. I got it, cool. All right, now we got this uh, all sorted out. The meter tide is the good one. 
Collision component, category, mask, size, damage, parent. Category, K, filter, None, really. Well, hmm. No, you know, it just needs to be K. I guess the K filter item would be the thing. Yeah, something like that. Oh, yeah, totally. Death trash, right? Looks great. Yeah. If anybody hasn't seen Death Trash, I'll just, I'll just show the stream. This is super cool. Twitter. Ladder Thief. Oh, Ladder Thief, that's right. Your, your, dude, your new space looks so cool. Okay, where is this tweet to? Um, here it is. This guy. Death Trash! Stefan Hovelbrinks. Oh, he's got deathtrash.com. Alright, there you go. Yeah, this game looks great. I think he just started it. Looks like it's really new. But, um, to give you kind of an idea, check this out. Oh, here's a new one he posted. Sort of like, looks like story based, but roguelike. All custom art. For every screen is custom art. Oh, nice! Look at that. Somebody wrote an article about his game already. Nice. Looks like a great, great game. Yeah. What's up, Nambots? Okay, so we need cape filter. I think filter item will do. And then. The mask of what it collides with. Okay, filter none. Size damage. Okay, so the size is going to be at least like K okay, tile size. Damage zero. Parent area layer. Hey, what's up, SCB? <laughs> nice, man. I wish I had a cool bot for you that could do that kind of stuff. Or do you, did you like, can you put a bot on here or something? I don't know how bots really work. Yeah, of course. Of course, man. Oh, that's right. Positions now have Z. Oh, nice. Right on. Oh, this is your bot right there, Sergeant Sir. You are a bot? Whoa. <laughs> Nice art. Nice art, bot. Okay, so we need a, a health component on here, too. So that it can be hit. And I think this is it. We just need to create a, a fire weak hidden entity. Yo, PETA! Ciao. Ciao, bello. Okay, let's see what we got so far. Um, so, Peta making um, the fire sword today. The fire sword's going to be like... It lights things on fire. So, I've got some pillars right here that I've made. These normally have fire already, but I've just made them to be pillars without fire. 
just to test out today. So um, we'll be able to have this sword fly by them and have them ignite with fire. So it looks like they're good. They're doing all right. They've uh, created. Oh, <laughs> Caro is dear. Ciao, Caro Bello. Yes, let there be light. And we have Lighter Thief here. We've got plenty of light. We're going to channel all of Lighter Thief's lighters into the fire sword right now. It's going to light on fire. <laughs> yes, Adama. You're looking at C++. What's your problem, man? Can I help you? How 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 can I help you? I'm like the genie from um, from that one movie, that one cartoon movie. Okay, so let's see if we can get the system. To recognize that this entity so if changer dot collision dot flags and collision fire and not e e dot collision dot ice or fire immune. And this is a, a little bit of a unique one because I want e dot collision off flags and fire weak. So only fire weak is able to be lit on fire. See, okay, so change the HP delta to zero. Actually, no, we want the HP delta to be nothing. There. Huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah, nice. Yes, that is the plan, Letter Thief, for sure. There'll be puzzle elements, so just like Zelda, where you can light some things on fire and that opens a door or whatever. Same kind of thing, yeah. These will be able to trigger things or open doors or whatever, stuff like that. You, you need to make it run and produce test evidence. I have no idea what she means by that. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I, I don't know what that means. That that's not a that's not a C plus plus specific question. That's more of like a your professor type question. So maybe somebody else here is in university and they know what that means, but I don't know. I guess your best bet is either ask a fellow student or ask your professor what she means. Okay, let's see if this works where we can add some fire now. Let's just add fire without even checking if it's if it's right. We'll call some create fire. We need to call the area. Area, no, no, no. Um, world, area, dot create fire. And that's going to be e dot position dot pause and what is this other this is the light offset oh I guess the light offset is zero and I guess this needs to be a public method yeah because it's a private method right now so okay let's go turn create fire into a public method. All right, cool. So while that's compiling, what else really needs to be done here? This is going to create this should create a fire element and then I guess, I guess we want to delete No, we don't want to delete this entity. I'm trying to think about how how would fire like 
stay with an enemy. Like if you were to if you were to light an enemy on fire, I guess I could you could make it different, like a fire like Zelda. Zelda's fire when you when you launch the fire with your um with your candle, it's like a separate entity for fire. Hey, what's up, Honey Beast Rainbow? Uh, yeah, man, I did. Um, well, well, not really, but I, all I'm saying is that's not a seat. Producing test evidence, I don't know what your professor means by that. That's not a. That's not particularly a C++ question that I'm familiar with. So I guess your best bet is to ask a fellow student or your professor to clarify. I hope that helps, man. Okay, so let's see what happens when we when the fire sword goes and travels across this entity that's just waiting for fire. It's waiting to be lit. It's weak to fire. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing happened. Uh, okay, why would that be? Okay, well, let's go back to the drawing board here. Um, so we're creating a light pillar tile. We're pushing back a separate entity. Entities that push back. We've got the position and the collision. We know those are good. Oh, you know what it is? I bet you it's because the the ghost sword needs to collide with... Oh man, which one of these is it? There's three different filters here. This is the one that it collides with and does damage to, I think. I don't know, let's try item there. No? Oh, there it worked. Oh, that was that was because it couldn't move on top of it. Yeah, so move is none. We definitely want the ghost sword to be able to move across anything. I think it really is collision item. What's up? Yeah. What's up, Jonah? Yeah, I'm streaming early. Thank to you guys. This is for you guys there in Europe. This is a European stream today. Europe. This is more Europe friendly. What's up, Spy Mart? So you guys, I'm I'm trying to get this um, firing fiery ghost sword to light this these pillars on fire right now, and I think I think I'm hot on the trail. Collision type is shot friend, yeah. Category collision mask is item. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. I. You guys wouldn't believe how many days I'm actually trying to do live streams earlier, and then it just takes me forever to get it actually started. So, so today I actually did get started early. What the heck is going on here? An item? Hmm. Oh, you know what? I might not have even added collision fire. That would explain part of it. So yeah, let's see. When I launch the ghost sword, ah, oh, no. See, it has the full collision fire. Dude, dude. Ah, yeah. 
Well, I mean, at least you got the program to work. That's awesome. Maybe that is. Maybe it's it's probably something simple like that. Yeah. All right, it should have collision fire. In fact, you know what? Let's set a breakpoint. Uh, where the heck? There. Set a breakpoint right there. Nothing. <sighs> you know what? It's probably not even that, man so crazy I don't even understand <laughs> I don't even understand my own system right now I think that's supposed to be none for collision I really need to I need to clarify all this stuff and I think that the actual pillar needs a collision mass let's see how the player works Move, right, we don't want to move on these. Collision. Yeah, okay, that's what it is. Okay, okay, all right. So when we create this entity that's just waiting for fire, we need to the collision component to collide with filter shot friend. I think that's how it goes. Let's hope this works. Yeah, man, I hope you'll figure it out. I'm telling you, like a, a fellow student just doing the same project, ask him what's up, or just or just email your professor. Don't you? Do you have your professor's email? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, that was it. All right. It's the entity that is being hit that needs its collision mask. I wish that was clear. I wish that was easier for me to understand. I'll find a I'll find a way to make that easier. Okay. All right. So we got change your collision flags. Let's see if this just works on the first try. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. It's working. All right. So let's delete this breakpoint. See if this works. So we can just light this on fire. Yeah. Nice. Oh, it worked. But it, get, it did this whole crazy delay, right? I think it might have been actually sleeping because of that delay there. <laughs> A Pointer Sister remix should echo? Uh, <laughs> definitely. Pointer Sisters. Okay, let's turn off the debug now. We got that. Let's see how that looks. And I think with this, without this hit point delta, it's not going to do a, a sleep, so it shouldn't be like doing that little delay or pause or hang, whatever that was. Whoa! Why is this light so crazy orange? Oh, uh, and it needs to be. Okay, so the position here. Minus 20, and then offset 20. But I am kind of wondering why the heck it was so orange. Like, what was that?
Whoa. What's up? What's up, system? Why are you all hot now? Oh, you know what? It might have done like tons of... Oh! Oh, I think I know why it's so orange. Yes, totally. Fire week. There's a lot of different cool attributes that are that are in place, but I just haven't implemented them yet. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of cool ones. Let's see, um, fire. Yeah, so so far I have collision, ice, and fire, and I'm gonna have more. There's gonna be two more types, and then you got ice week, fire week, ice resist, which will do half. Like if you you'll do half damage to ice type of damages, and then um, ice immune, fire immune. Those ones are just completely immune. So. Yes, elements are going to be part of this. Elemental damages and stuff. Very Final Fantasy-ish. Okay, I think what happened there is it flew through that pillar and created tons of fire entities. Every single frame it was creating another one. And that, that would explain why. So we needed to... E.collision dot in fact you know what we could just delete this whole entity but we would want to go e dot collision dot flags and remove the fire week so it's not going to do it again so if this works then what we can light those pillars on fire again and it's not going to do a bunch of just super orange and it won't it won't I won't hear my laptop like getting all its fan turning on what's up yeah thank you I, I, I'm glad it's a happy time zone oh oh okay the position was off there This doesn't make sense, putting zero here and negative 20 there. Anyways, I'm trying to get it to appear on top of the pillar by cre creating the correct Z by uh, essentially putting it at the right position and offsetting the actual graphics. There, it still did it. What's up? Oh. Oh, I did minus, minus. Dude, I'm having a slow day today. My brain is so like messed up. Why is that? What makes one day, what, why is it that one day I'm a great coder and the next day I'm just like horrible? I have no idea. I can't help myself. Can't help you guys learn either. It's a mystery to me. There we go. Okay, it still did a hit point delta. Maybe it is the third. It's, it's got to be El Nino. Maybe. Maybe, but I don't know. It's just, I know today I'm just feeling that. Like, normally I'll wake up and I'll be like, yeah, doing stuff before I even stream. But today I've just had sluggish energy. Very, I'm like a slug. Maybe I dreamt of slugs last night. Okay, um, this let's do negative yeah negative twenty there, but then twenty one here. I want it to be a little, sit a little bit more. Maybe twenty two. And I don't know what it is that for Santa Anna's. We get those. Wait, do we? No. Yeah, we used to get those in Southern Cal, but I, up here in, in the Bay Area, I don't think we get Santa Ana's anymore. I think that's pretty much a, a, the heat coming from Arizona and Eastern California getting going into Southern California. Cool. All right, this is looking good. Maybe two, okay, another pixel at least. And I'm thinking one pixel to the right. And why the heck is it delaying? 
Is it just that hard to create fire? It's creating this entity. There's the additive fire. No, that's not additive fire. This is, oh. This is the uh, orange ovaly light. This is the additive fire. This is the fire animated. It also creates some particles. This is kind of a heavy function. It's creating a lot, but it's also creating a light. That's I think that might be what it is, what it is. It's light component. So let's see. I'm gonna comment out this light component really quick and see if that is what's creating. This, this slowdown or whatever it is. No, that wasn't it. You see that? It's, it's really slowing down there. Okay, let's, let's try and figure it out. There's somewhere where I call pause, take pause or something like that. I'm wondering if it's that. No, it's not. I guess it's not pause. Something to do with pausing. Sleep. There it is. Sleep. Okay, I'm going to comment out the sleep timer entirely for a second and see if it's that. That would... This would this is a divide and conquer strategy. I'm trying to figure out why this is slowing down momentarily. Oh, that was it. Okay. Cool. Awesome. All right. All we gotta do is find out why. What's calling sleep? And why is it sleeping? Ah. Yeah, nice. Oh, you know what? This whole check right here needs to see. Wait, no. Okay, I'm gonna set a breakpoint here because this HP delta equals zero should make all that not happen. This should it should never even get into this hurt thing. So wait, I commented this back in. Yeah, all right, cool. Ready to try this again. Get rid of this delay, and then we'll start applying this to other stuff. I'd like to—I like to be able to light enemies on fire too. That would be kind of cool. Okay, so I can kill this. Don't need that. Don't need these. Don't need this. Okay. All right, so we're creating fire. Done. Set it so you, it's not going to do it again. It sets the HP delta to zero. Okay, so here we go. Hit points before is one. We have one hit point before this. The delta is zero. So after we apply that delta, You've got E dot health, a hit points of one, still one. Oh, 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 I already know what's going on. Okay, so this time it's not going to even run this. Yeah, see that? It doesn't even run it. But the next time it calls it, that's when it actually does it. So.
Okay, so how would we get rid of I mean, one a really simple way to do this would be to completely get rid of the entity. Hey, what's up, Valware? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. A little sluggish mentally, but I'm doing some fun stuff here. I'm creating a fire, the fire sword, which lights stuff on fire. And so first I'm starting with the simple pillar. The, these pillars are just like waiting to be lit by fire, and you light them on fire. And this will be kind of cool for puzzles, you know, opening doors, but also adding light to areas. And maybe I can make fire spread too. I'm not sure how, I don't want it to be too complex. Like I don't want this to be such a complex system that it takes me a week or something like that. Cause I really need to, I really need to haul ass as fast as I can with this game right now. Cause I got to get a beta version done in like a month. So anyways, um, I don't want to make this too complex. So I'm going to start simple with it. Um, so I need to find a way, oh, duh, e dot collision dot, we can set it's, um, it's, it's mask, it's collision mask. Yeah, so we want to take off shop friend. So if, let's just check all this. If E dot, no, not E, um, if changer, changer is the entity being changed. So changer dot collision dot category equals K filter shop friend. And E dot collision dot mask and K filter shop friend. Then we remove it. So it can't be hit again. It can't be hit twice. But this is only, I only want to run this. If we don't want to get hit uh, hit or lit twice okay let's see if let's see if this is all working oh there you go I know what you mean man I know those days I have them all the time cool man yeah lurk away tomorrow will be better Huh. Oh, X pixel. That's a good way to do it. I never thought of doing it that way. <laughs> so this is probably a better way to do it, right? Let me think about that. And equals not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, X pickle, X pickle, you're right. This is actually a better way to do it because doing XOR requires that you that it has to have that that flag or that bit, um, or else the XOR adds the bit. So that's why I'm always having to check for it. So this is actually better. Let me do. Let me just do that. Start start the habit of doing it that way because that's better. And equals not K filter shop friend. Wow, I can't believe I never this never crossed my mind to do it that way. Thank you, X Pixel. Better for sure.
Because there's just an inherent weakness in, in the uh, exclusive or. All right, so it's back to, we've added the fire. We're taking away the fire weakness. Yeah, and this also is something you should only run. Okay, anyways, this is for future. Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, cool. We had the changers, collision not category, had the shot friend. And this guy, this entity, which is the, the pillar of fire or whatever, was masked with its collision filter shop friend and then we are removing it so let's let's just make sure that it removes it correctly collision mask is oh i did flags no wait i didn't i didn't do flags so i didn't yeah mask cool mask is 4096 so after this it should be zero cool yes Plus one X pixel. Okay, let's delete this breakpoint once again. And now we can run it and just see what the heck happens. Okay. Oh yeah, okay, I got it. So when you when you hit an enemy with this that's that's weak to fire, um, it can create a fire element right there that immediately hits the enemy. And then if the enemy ever steps on it again, yeah. Sweet, cool, that was rad, right? That was gif worthy wrist right there. All right, okay. Cool, all right, it's time to start working on some foes then. So what happens right now is the foes just get hit. We wanted to, um, what's up, Wolski? They still think I'm making a game? <laughs> nice one. Uh, I know, it's been over six months of straight up development days already. Crazy. Okay, so yeah, new goal. Let's, let's see that one more time. I want to revel in how awesome it is that we can light these pillars on fire. That was super cool. Alright. Yay. Revel. I'm going to do it one more time. <laughs> Not a real link. What's the difference between C++ and Java? They are two different languages, but they're similar. What's better though? It totally depends. It depends on what you prefer, and it also depends on what um, what kind of game you want to make. So, if you're if you're looking at at exploring the difference between C++ and Java, first, and I would I would ask you what it is you want to do. So, not a real link. What do you want to make? What? It, why do you? Why are you interested in learning programming? Yes. Oh man. So that's what I'm talking about. This this is a that's a rad idea, right? It's so rad and it's so tempting to do, but I'm worried this might just take um. This might just take so much time, but I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what we can accomplish today with lighting enemies on fire. And maybe that would be, it would be so sweet if the hat could light on fire. I'm going to write this idea down. That's right, Lighter Thief. I'm, I'm really loving your input today. So you're just learning. You just learned C. Cool, man. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with Lith right here. If you learn C already, definitely 
keep on keep with your C path and learn C++. I think with C++ you're going to have more more a wider uh, window of what you can possibly do with it. Java is a little bit more limited because it doesn't compile on every platform and C++ is faster. Yeah, or if you if you straight up hated C, then yeah, it might be time to learn something like Java. It's a good example. Yeah, and also Grim Gary here. If you learn C already, you basically have learned the ultimate root of basically every other language. Okay. So yeah, let's go. To, okay, now that I've now that we've done this, I'm gonna do it one more time, and then let's go to the next screen and light some enemies on fire. Yay! I need a cool like fire being lit noise there. Okay, we'll save and quit. Right there. Yeah, you're you're welcome, man. Oh, Alcrass, thank you. Let's let's check that out. You're right. Yeah, that's the bitwise knot. Let's do. Let's see the difference between those. So we can illustrate it even clearer. How did I decide the level of my colors for the game art? I just really, I threw it in the game. Actually, the first thing I did is I made a mock-up. A long, long time ago, back in November when I was starting this game, I created a single mock-up image. Actually, I created many, many mock-up images, but I finally ended up with one mock-up mock image that I really liked. And that kind of gave me um, a base value to go for. And um, that's where I started. Java's our lord and savior. <laughs> okay. Ah. Uh, yeah, there's one is false, two is, of course, that. But let's do it one more time where we actually cast this into an unsigned. Both of these. And see what happens. Because we're and, and equals right, right there. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Mockups will really help you dial in the, the the aesthetic, the look you're going for, the values of the colors, the the saturation level. Oh, okay. Rust. Is Rust cool? I've heard Rust is, is um, I haven't heard anything about Rust, actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Um, also, oh yeah, there's this great video I just watched the other day. It's so good. Color by Blender Guru. Is it this one? Oh, yeah, this is totally it. This is a great one on understanding colors and dialing that kind of stuff in. That um, Tappy shared this with me a, a few few days ago. Tappy's one of the guys here on the live stream sometimes. Okay, uh, all right, so there, there you have it. One, unsigned one, yeah. So really, so the bug here, thank you once again. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to say your name, but Akras. The bug here, the reason why this was working is that 
and equals zero is always zero. So we want to definitely switch that, that to a bitwise not. Really awesome. Thanks for mentioning that. And let's set a breakpoint one more time here. Leave that breakpoint there. Rust is all right, but infuriating coming from Java. Ah, OK. Yeah, man. Yeah, thank you. Nice catch. Really nice catch. I'm definitely having one of those days where um, I probably if, if I keep coding all day today, I'll, I'll probably put in so many bugs like that. Okay, so let's just make sure this is all the same. So before we do this, we have ease collision mask. 4096. Afterwards, zero. Cool. All right, good, good, good. Okay, so once again, moving into how to get this, um, to be able to light enemies on fire, I'm thinking what'll happen, because if I, if, I, if I make it so an enemy can be lit on fire and the fire stays with the enemy as the enemy moves, um, that's more complex. But if, if you light an enemy on fire and what really happens is some fire appears at that point and stays there and the enemy gets knocked back by the fire, that would be a lot easier to implement. So I'm going to do it that way first. Okay, so let's make so these enemies weak to fire to start with. Create being, create AI. Here's what we want to do. Create AI. If the AI is alive, Yeah, no. I don't want to create an actual fire component. That's kind of a that's kind of uh, class-based thinking versus component-based thinking. So, um, okay, so I'm gonna make everything weak to fire. But in essence, I think you might be imagining exactly what I was saying there with. Um, with creating a separate entity with fire. It's kind of, we might be on the same page there. Um, okay, so if e.collision.category equals k filter foe, e.collision.mass or no flags, k uh, collision fire weak there. So I'm just, I'm manually making every one of the, the enemies in the whole game weak to fire right now because I haven't created the data structure to actually load that from their property lists and stuff. So that's why I highlighted all this code like this and made it look really obviously weird so that I remember to take this out and make it data driven. So anyways, now that all these, these guys are weak to fire, we'll see what happens when we hit one. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. So it creates some fire, and this fire entity can hurt enemies. Hmm.
and we want it to like fizzle out after a while. So, so this is a little bit different than Man, I'm such a janky coder today. I'm, trying, I'm thinking of ways of doing stuff that's just not that cool, right? So what I was thinking there is like, um, I need to I need to go into this create fire method, right? And change the entity, change one of these entities so that it's going to hurt enemies. But I don't want every fire in the whole game to hurt enemies. In fact, the ones that are up on top of the pillars, I want them to never touch anything. They just don't hurt anything at all. So there needs to be a difference. Somehow, this method here of creating fire needs to detect. Oh, you know what? I could just give it a damage. That'd probably be better than doing some janky like checking base position versus light offset. Yeah, I'll give it an actual boolean or integer. I'll give it an integer damage so the fire can damage stuff if that is passed in. Yes. Yes, yes. Reglace. Yep. There's actually several different ranged attacks. So let me let me um let me show you. Let me get this compiled. Actually, let me I'll run it without um without rebuilding. So there's several different of these kind of swords. There's the ghost sword. I'll show you that first. No, no, build for running. Run without building. Okay, so here's the ghost sword. The ghost sword is just like um, just like in Zelda. So you've got that. This is the regular ghost sword, right? So you've got item combining in this game, Regulus. So you can combine items, and if you combine your ghost sword with some fire, you get that fire sword, which you just saw. If you combine it with ice, you get the ice sword which allows you to freeze enemies, just like Metroid. Imagine Metroid's ice beam. So I'll show you, oh, I don't want to build. I want to run without building. So yeah, here's the ice sword. Freezes your enemies. It doesn't damage your enemies, it just freezes them. So that's what that is. Yeah, and check this out too. There's the fear sword as well. So the fear sword works off of your your how low your health goes. So you remember how in Zelda, you it was always if you're at full health. Well, the fear sword is the exact opposite. So as you get lower in health, the fear sword gets stronger and is able to go further and further distances. I keep on trying to build and run. So the fear sword's black right now. I'm gonna I'm probably gonna do some custom art for it though. So when you first start. You can't even use your fear sword because I have full health. But as I start to lose some health, let's lose some more health actually. There. So now I have a, a weak fear sword started. And as I lose some more health, it gets stronger. And I lose some more, like I'm almost almost dead, and it goes the farthest. So yeah. Oh yeah, Azneris, what's up man? Yeah, the ice sword, that's from yesterday. It turned out pretty good, I'm loving it. So now I'm working on the fire sword. Uh, hoo hoo boss, yes, but you, you won't be able to freeze all enemies. So enemies have several different types of um, immunities, weaknesses, and stuff like that. So they can be, um, they can be weak to a certain element. So that means with fire, for example, they can get lit on fire. Or they can resist ice or fire. Um, so if they resist ice or fire, that means they do they take half the damage, and they can also be totally immune. So that means they take no damage. And there's gonna be there's gonna be also like lightning um, and some other ones too. Hey, thanks, Parker boy. Cheers, man. Welcome to the stream. 
Yeah, yeah, totally. Regulus, there's oh, there's so much more to this game than just that. Um, check it out. You got when you when you start this game, you create you create a game with six letters, and that six letters generates an entire world. So this this is a procedurally generated Zelda game. So as I um I can run around this world and I have no idea what this world is like, you know? Every time you create a new game, you can create a totally different world, or you can play a world you already know if you enter the same six letters, right? Um, and also there's item crafting, so let me kill all the enemies on the screen and I'll show you. You can fly back to your ship using your teleport cube, so I'm going to use my teleport cube now, and that takes me back to the ship where I can craft items. So that's, where I was, that's what I was talking about, the ghost sword, you can craft it. So when you take your ghost sword here to this item crafting dude, you can like put your ghost sword down and then put down the the fire or whatever and he would this guy would craft those two items into the the fire sword so okay um let's get this back to the fire sword and where was i with that oh yeah i want to be able to do int damage here when creating these guys. I know the poster. Were you there when we were when I was being drawn? The wolf? Were you the one that suggested that? The wolf poster? Alright, so we're gonna start with zero damage. Here in area, create fire. This is especially this one is zero damage. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is make it so this somehow distinguishes between. between creating fire and lighting something on fire. How do I do that? Um, if it was an enemy... Yeah. Agreed. Definitely. Little details like that are what make a game give a character this is where we're creating a light pillar tile, cool, a light sconce tile, both of these also are zero damage. Okay, this is kind of janky to start with it this way, but if the entity is a foe, then we can create fire on the ground. So if e dot collision dot category k filter foe it's gonna be a totally different kind of fire which has one damage, no offset. Otherwise, created this other kind right here. Big pixel. <laughs> Lake Big Pixel. Okay, this is where. Yeah. I don't need these crazy comments. Okay. So yeah, we want to create a, a fire that damages with this kind of thing here. Hey, what's up, Vamarid? It's going great, man. Yeah, I haven't seen you on here in a minute. Hope you're doing good. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so now we need to be able to create damaging fire.
damage right here. We'll create another, we'll add to this entity. So if, if the damage, greater than zero, then we want to get get the last entity, add in a collision component, okay that's K filter This is a neutral. It's not. It's not a foe. It's not a friend. Um, and it collide. It mass collides. Collides with nothing. Wait a minute. I need to make sure that all enemies. Like, let's start with the blobs that we're working on right now. I need to make sure their default collision um, where's that? Create being yeah, here. Create being uh, no, it's actually in component. So we go component collision component. Yeah, here it is. Collision component. Yeah, here's where we can be hurt by. So we want to K filter neutral as well. That's a big change to this whole engine right here. So I need to make sure that works because other things that are using neutral are like flies, um, water hoppers, butterflies, bats, things like that, the, the squirrels. So I just need to make sure that squirrels and flies and things like that don't damage foes. But I'm pretty sure... Oh, uh, nope. You know what? Let's go. Let's actually... Let's check that. Squirrel. Collision. Neutral. None. Okay. That's good. How about fly? No collision. Good. Okay. Maybe this will be all right. Hopper. No collision. What about butterflies? Good. No collision. Right. Okay. Yeah. This will work. Rabbits. Yes. Definitely. Rabbits. You got it. I love doing simple little stuff that has really nothing to do with the gameplay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I think this will work. Making, by default, all the foes able to be damaged by the neutral entities. So now we need to go to area where we're creating fire. Uh, are, are you asking about this game, Regulus, or you're asking about the C language in general? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, category, mask, size, damage, parent. Okay, size, we'll do tile size. Damage, one. Parent area layer. Cool. Okay, now it has a collision component. And we want to give it a lifetime too. So this is probably where we want to do that. Oh. No, C++, you're going to use new and delete. So regular, like you would do something like this, like auto Auto, um, 
let's just do in pointer equals new int and then you could just do something like int int pointer I mean in direction of int pointer equals one so that set it to one and then you would go delete int pointer so that's it's a lot different than C the C language in C you would do it differently hey what's up doc yeah so in C you would do it like this like um, you would go let's put these in their own blocks so we can use the same variable name so this is the C++ way right And here's the C way. Yeah, C is different. So you would go um, auto int pointer. I don't even know if you could do that with C. Auto block size of int, right? And then in direction of int pointer equals one. And then you would go free int pointer, right? So they're totally different. Oh, and this needs to be an int pointer specifically because malloc returns void pointer. So there you go. Oh, and you also need to cast that because it's C. So there, that's the difference, right? C++ is, is like you use new and delete. Actually now with C++ 11, you're, you're gonna use something more like unique pointer. So you would actually do this in C++11, you would go um, make unique make unique what's up with I don't know why it doesn't have make unique oh well I don't know unique pointers that well yet either so that's there, there. I hope that helps man okay uh, so now we've got a collision component for this fire. It's not ever going to die. It's just going to sit there forever. But I believe this will work. Let's see what happens. So this is, let's make sure the system is still creating the fire like that. Yeah, we should have got filter foe, create the fire. And what will happen is the next tick, the, the, the enemy will get hit by that. Yeah, it totally works. That even hurt that, that guy a ton of times. Yeah, oh, this is sweet. Let there be fire. Oh man, this is my favorite sword yet. So cool. Yeah. Oh man, this is rad. Kill some enemies rad now. Yeah. All right, so cool. All it needs now is it for it to die after some time, right? So let's do a simple little method, a lambda callback for that. Yeah, I know, it's pretty rad, right? Yes. I guess I'm one of them. <laughs> Uh, hey, thanks for following. Okay, um, so yeah, we'll do a, a simple little callback. Uh, yeah, all we need to do is render dot sprite dot schedule once. We'll schedule a callback. We need oh, we need to copy the id. And this is really simple. We just go world area. Delete, delete entity, id, and we do a delay. This is the lifetime of this this fire. So one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand. Maybe about seven seconds. This fire will live. Uh, 
Okay, and we also want it to kind of like flicker and fade out or something like that. So, but uh, first, first I just want to see if it can get removed first. Nice. I love how it can hurt enemies multiple times. All right. Yeah, that worked, but it left the it left everything else the other part of the entity here. All right. So we need to be able to delete all of those entities. So let's make a vector of eids. And then now we're going to capture all is that that whole vector. So we're capturing eids and for auto eid in eids. Actually, we probably just want to use ID here. World delete any ID. Okay, so if this works, then we won't even we won't even see that that like other bit of the fire that was left over. What's up, Wacko is God? What's the data behavior format I'm using? Which one are you talking about? Are you talking about this lambda function? Or are you talking about entities? Let me know and I'll, I'll definitely let you know what it is. Okay, let's see. We got some fire, come on. Bam. Oh yeah. Okay, so it shouldn't have any flickering light after after this. Yeah, all right. It worked. Yay. Dude, I love this. This fire is so rad. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's get it to like fade out somehow. I might need to do some custom pixel art for this actually. Some flickering would help too. Maybe I could just make it flicker. Let's start with the flicker, and then we'll see if we need to add some kind of like special animation or something. Yeah, right, this is a rad sword. You wanna burn the rabbits? <laughs> oh, Peta. Uh. Yeah, okay. So let's do, let's do this right, const float duration equals 7.0 so then we set this duration here we're gonna do one more schedule once or maybe there's a better way to do this no nah, yeah I mean schedule once works okay so this is um let's start identifying these. This is um, fade out slash flicker out and this is remove. Okay and so it's gonna flicker just the Ian. Uh, we'll go system and f id f dot render dot sprite dot run action blink create Oh wait, we want to do duration minus. We want to set like a fade duration. Uh, 
Oh yeah, the data files of the game. Yeah, they're built in a simple text file, and I've actually released the source code for them. So, like here's the here's this, and let me show you where the the free source code is. It's on GitHub. Valtry, there you go. Here's all C++ code. You can do the exact same thing with your game. So, and hopefully this explains it well enough with this README. And also, if you check out the header, Valtry.h, it's all self-documented C++. So you can look at every function and kind of get a feel for what it does. And there's an example of how to use it here too, so on the README. So, there you go, man. Okay, so blink create. Uh, we want to capture the fade duration. We want to subtract the fade duration here. Okay, so we're going to blink for the duration of the fade and then divide fade duration by 0 0.1 to get the number of blinks we want to do. Oh, do we already have an F? Don't tell me I gotta go to G, man. Oh well. Shadow that local variable, I don't care. Okay, so let's see if it flickers out. Oh, it flickered, but it didn't go away. Why didn't you wanna go away, man? Oh, and I can't even step on it. That's really, really weird. Oh, because I can't step on neutrals. So I do need to kind of work with this a bit. Huh. Yeah. Okay, um, I, why didn't it remove itself? I guess it might have still been running something. Let's see what that, if that does it. Man, I'm getting hungry already. Have I been streaming a long time or something? Only an hour and a half. <laughs> I'm so whiny today. Oh, they're still there. You're supposed to be gone. Hello, what's up, Insanity Wolfman? Have you seen the the Wolfman guy from the UK that like talks to wolves and he has a whole pack of wolves and he lived with wolves for a while? Oh, you know what it is? I accidentally named this the same as that one so it overrid it or overrode it. So let's see if we call this one Fade Fire. There we go. And we can keep that minus point one there. Would an ice warp kill the fire? Ooh. Ooh, yeah, it should. It definitely should. That's a cool that's a cool point, right? Some kind of ice, any kind of ice should kill fire. This is what I'm talking about. I don't want to make this too complex, but it is just so cool, right? Yeah, that killed that whole enemy right there. Awesome. I like that. I like that. That's cool. Hmm. It'd be nice if the if the actual light like actually faded itself out. 
Yeah, it might be overpowered. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure what it'll do, but it, yeah. Ice should definitely be able to kill fire. So it would definitely be less overpowered if it lasted shorter times. So let's go a lot shorter to start with. And I would like to get it to fade out the oval. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you, you feel the power there, but you also feel it because there's a slight delay. So you'll, you'll see that when you actually play this game. There's just a tiny few milliseconds of delay. It gives you this feeling that you really connected. All right, we can do it this way. So we'll scale out the first one. So we wanna go, let's just change this up a bit. Nah, let's do this, let's do this better. Ian is the one we're doing here. Um, he is zero equals he is dot front or just zero. Okay. So e at zero dot sprite dot run action scale to create over the course of the fade duration. We want to like scale it all the way down to like almost nothing. Let's see how that looks. All right, so yeah, man, I'm kind of getting so hungry already. I think I'm gonna have to go close down the stream a little bit early today. I think this might be it. Okay, it didn't, it didn't seem to work. Hmm. Wait, what was zero? Yeah, it's the light. That should be the first one. I don't know. I think I'll, I'll, I'm gonna finish this later. Yeah, I gotta get going for sure. Saturday, gonna have a nice relaxing Saturday afternoon. But before I go, let's wander around the overworld and try out this new Awesome, almost overpowered weapon. <laughs> Eat <a> Snickers. <laughs> Whoa, that's a bug right there. Whoa, another bug. I want to find some other enemies. Yeah, so there's a lot of work left to do with this fire. Like, I shouldn't be able to walk across it, right? Or, I mean, I should, I should be able to walk across fire and hurt myself. So that'll make it a little bit less overpowered, right? If, if I were to get hurt by this, that would definitely, like, help out. Making it a little less awesome. 
Yeah, that's a good idea, Jonah. One nine, light the orb, the orbs on fire. Let's see some other enemies. There we go. Cool. Yeah, this this weapon is so rad. I might have to think of a way to make this a little less powerful. Like maybe maybe fire doesn't always do full damage. Maybe it does half damage, or maybe most enemies are like fire resistant or something. I don't know. We'll have to I'll have to play around with this whole concept and also the uh <laughs> Yeah, that really killed the burrowing enemies like crazy fast. Wow. Cool. Alright, yeah, so that's it for today's stream. Maybe also make the fires last a little longer. Yeah, I just had it lasting longer, but it was making it so it was a bit too overpowered. How do I do the smooth transition? I just load two areas and then slide them. That's all. Yeah, and I will, yeah, Hyrule's why I'll definitely have some fire inside the sword as well. I'll make it more, um, Oh no, maybe not actually in the actual sword, but in the in the particle that comes out of it. So it will kind of look like it has fire inside it. Yeah, it's pretty rad, right? The fire sword. I almost need to make it a little less rad, but I don't know. Yeah, there you go, Hyrule Spy. There's a great idea. Fire damage gets less over time. Cool idea. I like it. Uh, so yeah, um, that's it for today's stream. Um, if you guys are just joining in, this game is called Songbringer. It's coming out in about five months. If you want, you can pre-order it on songbringer.com, and that gives you um, that puts your name on the the credits of the game and on the main menu forever for everyone to see. So uh, that's it. I'll be back again tomorrow, same time ish. I usually start around somewhere between two and five p.m. Pacific time. So that's it. We'll talk to you guys later.